Hi, Mary here at Mary's Heirloom Seeds, and I'd like to chat about seed germination. Now, a lot of our customers report that they have very high germination rates with our seeds. And part of the success in germinating seeds is knowing what conditions that seeds prefer to germinate in. Now, some prefer cold, some prefer warm, uh, some prefer dark, and some prefer light. So it's really exciting to know that different seeds require different environments and they'll thrive in them compared to others. So the actual germination is when your seed uh, develops into a new plant. Uh, water is essential with seed germination. So you will need, obviously, a source of water and temperature is an important factor. As I mentioned earlier, some prefer cold, some prefer warm. In general, a uh, temperature of 70 degrees or more is best for seed germination. That's a general rule, but it's not the same for everybody, obviously, or I should say for every seed variety. Um, cold stratification is one of uh, ways of germinating seeds that need cold temperature. So some varieties, and those include, but not limited to, lavender or verbena or comfrey, those do best with cold stratification. And all that is, is simply mimicking the environment that that seed would normally germinate best in in the wild. So a lot of people use cold stratification with a refrigerator. That's the absolute easiest way for cold stratification if you're doing it on your own and not using the wild. Now you can plant your seeds out in your garden or on your farm and allow them to overwinter and then as the spring comes and as your ground thaws out they've gone through the natural process. But if you don't have all season or you don't want to wait all winter long until spring for them to germinate, you can do a refrigerated cold stratification. And that can be as simple as placing your seeds in a cool, damp towel or um, paper towel. It doesn't have to be an, a physical towel um, or even a plastic container. So you can use, and I have some of my kits here on the table from one of our videos, you can use a tray like this uh, with a lid, or this one is probably better with a lid. You can just use a paper towel inside there, uh, moisten it and place it in the refrigerator, or you can use vermiculite. Um, you don't need a lot of vermiculite for your seeds, but you do want to make sure they are completely covered and that they stay damp. You don't want it sitting in water, but you don't want it to dry out, so important things. Seeds in general, if they dry out, uh, tend to not thrive. So you want to make sure your seeds stay moist without being in soaking in water, without having wet feet, as my granny used to say. So cold stratification is one of many ways uh, that some varieties prefer to grow. Cold stratification typically takes one to three months, again, depending on the variety, to plant outside. A customer asked if we prepared our comfrey seeds for direct planting, and the answer to that is no. Some of you might be purchasing comfrey seeds to plant now, and some of you might be planting comfrey seeds in two years or three years. So you will need to do your own cold processing, overwintering, however you'd like to process those seeds on your own. Now, scarification is another option that some seeds require, and that is simply breaking up the hard outer shell of a seed. So these don't necessarily need a lot of work, but this is a Moringa seed. It has a fairly hard shell, and that's why we soak Moringa seeds in water before we plant outside. Some seeds are very, very tough on the outside and they need a little more push <laughs> to uh, open up to allow the water, the moisture inside. So some people will use um, sandpaper and you just simply put it between the two pieces of sandpaper, 
and rub it together and that will rough up the outer shell of your hard seed. Some people actually use a razor blade to slice little um, holes, if you will, in the hard seed coating. And some people use a hammer. I don't use a hammer on my seeds. I don't usually plant anything that needs that much force. But again, de depends on what you're growing and uh, what your area is like that you need scarification for. It could also be as simple as soaking your seeds in water. And if you notice, if you've purchased some of our seeds, we've got planting guides available and we do discuss uh, soaking some of your seeds in water before you plant. And it really does make a huge difference in some cases. Now I've had people say, oh, there's no science behind that. Well, fine, what works for you, what works for me, doesn't work for everybody. But that's one of many ways that we like to do some of our seeds, especially our seeds with a harder outer shell, it really helps to soak your seeds. Now for planting your seeds, the rule of thumb is typically twice as deep as the size of your seed. So obviously for larger seeds like a Moringa, you're gonna want to plant your seed deeper in the soil than you would say, for example, um, a radish seed, which is much smaller. So when you do plant your seeds, you need to keep in mind for the optimal uh, germination of your seeds, you will wanna make sure that you don't plant them too deep and you don't plant them too shallow because if you plant it too shallow, it doesn't have enough room to really extend down into the soil. It might, the, seed, the, um, the roots might pop up above the soil and you don't want that happening either. So again, it's just a general rule of thumb. It's not the absolute in all of them. Some seeds are best sown on the surface of the soil and then gently pushed down. Now in that case, we need to talk about watering. So if you're going to plant your seeds indoors or in containers before you plant them outside, I have some examples I wanna show. Um, the first is a six cell germination tray. So if you're gonna plant seeds in soil and in a germination tray, you're gonna wanna bottom, bottom water. That means this is gonna go in a larger tray and you're gonna water the bottom. There's a reason for that. Or you can also spray with a water bottle, but I prefer to bottom water. The reason for that is if you have teeny tiny seeds up here and you splash a bunch of water on the top, those seeds might be displaced. And then you're looking at it going, well, nothing's germinating, but in fact, the seeds are no longer in the germination cell. So bottom watering is very beneficial for that. The second reason for bottom watering is it can lessen uh, the chances of you getting diseases on your plants um, or rotting like dampening off where the actual stem of your seedling gets too damp, too moist, and basically molds or rots. So you definitely wanna make sure that you have a little more drier of a surface, and by bottom watering, you're encouraging those roots to grow down towards the water. So that's really beneficial. Now the other part of that is, we have these kits we've discussed. This is a, a catnip kit that we discussed quite a while ago, and we had Lucy here helping us out. And these are coconut core pellets. Coconut core pellets make seed starting simple. You can plant very teeny tiny seeds in these so you don't lose them. And you can also plant things that take a little longer and that might need a little more help with growing, such as lavender or comfrey, rosemary, things like that, that might take a little longer to germinate. So these coconut core pellets really do make a difference in that case. Now, days to germination. Typically seeds germinate anywhere from three days to 21 days. Now I had a little bit of excitement on this one here and I've been really ex excited to show you this. Um, this is French breakfast radish and I meant to plant these seven days before we got started and I didn't have time. I just completely forgot. So the today is the 27th and these seeds were planted on the 24th. French breakfast radish, that says FB radish. Um, and if you see here, they're already pushing up the uh, paper towel that I use. So again, this is just a tray that we used, paper towel to keep it moist. And we had 100% germination on these. They just grew very, very well. And you probably did this when you were a kid, 
uh, in school. I know I did. And it's always exciting to, to see how this works. So this is the teeny baby root here on the bottom. And then you have the little seedling sticking up there. Now, radish is a root crop. I prefer to direct sow all of my radish. So I wouldn't recommend germinating this way for radish. But for the purpose of the video, I really wanted to share with you something fun, something that would really give you an idea of how it looks. And keep in mind, this is only three days. I, I posted a picture that they already germinated in 24 hours. So this is three days worth of growth. And it's just exciting. I'll, I'll show it to you again. They have done a very good job in growing. And to be honest, because these are radish and they're root crops, I probably won't plant these. I'll probably give them out to our chickens. You can actually eat radish uh, sprouts. They're really, really good and they're very healthy for you. Um, sometimes I eat them. Sometimes I give them to the chickens. They like it too. Here's a nice healthy root. So this root part portion will grow down and the green will grow up. And somewhere in the middle, you'll end up with a root bulb, which is your radish that you would eat. You could actually eat the greenery as well, which is kind of exciting too. Radish is what I call a double duty veggie. You can eat the root, um, you can eat the greens, you can throw the greens to your chickens too if you have those, but I love to eat them. Um, and this is just one example I wanted to show. This is the, the outer portion of the seed. I don't think you can see that very well. There it is. Um, that's just the outer shell. It doesn't need a lot of uh, attention. It definitely doesn't need stratification or scarification because these did really well. Now the other one I wanted to show you, keep in mind this is only three days. We started these on Thursday and now it's Sunday. Beans typically take I think four to seven days uh, for germination. So you see the little uh, the little uh, seedlings popping up out of the ground, usually around three days now or longer. Uh, again, till uh, 10 to 14 days even, depending on your growing area. It's kind of cool outside. It's been warm out throughout the day and cool in the morning. So just keep that in mind. You want to make sure you plant at the appropriate time. That's why we have a planting guide available at Mary's Heirloom Seeds and it's free. We share all sorts of growing tips on our website, on our Facebook page. All of this is, information is free. So this here are, uh, this is Blue Lake Bush Beans. See that there? And we already have growth as well. So you can see, you'd think a green bean would have a green bean, but it doesn't. Green beans are actually white. Uh, the actual bean is white, and then of course the outer side is green. You have the roots there growing out. And then above is where the greenery would come out from the soil. Now we mentioned in our Seeds Are Amazing video that seedlings don't require fertilizer. One of the most amazing things about seeds is they are a powerhouse. They have built in all of the nutrients they need to get started in life, which is really exciting. Uh, if your soil doesn't have a lot of nutrients in it, or if you're seed starting using coconut core pellets or coconut core, which doesn't have a lot of added nutrients, you can do that at a later time. But if you're just starting out the seeds, you definitely don't need fertilizer. Um, if you are planting root crops, I do not recommend using coconut core pellets. You are better off direct sowing seeds of root crops. So that would be beets, radish, onions, rutabagas, turnips. All of those should be directly sown right into your soil. They typically do best if they're direct sown and they don't always uh, thrive or survive when you transplant them. So keep that in mind. Now the other seeds, I'm gonna do a whole video about this at a later time, but I wanted to share with you something that we don't carry at Mary's Heirloom Seeds. This is called chayote. This is where your seed comes from. It looks kind of like a pear, right? The seed is inside and the seed actually germinates directly within 
the produce within, we call it a fruit, but it's a vegetable, but it's a great substitute for apple. So if you, uh, if you don't consume apples because they have a lot of sugar, or maybe you're on the ketogenic diet and you don't want to eat those extra carbs, uh, chayote is a great option and it's already growing. This just sat right on my countertop and grew right there. So the reason we wanted to share with you and chat about uh, seed germination is our customers notice, like I mentioned, we have a very high germination rate on our seeds. And that all depends on how you're growing it and how fresh your seeds are. Now I have my own private stash of seeds, of course, right? We started Mary's Heirloom Seeds back in 2011, and I still have some of those seeds that we didn't sell to our customers. I don't sell them to our customers now, but I keep them in my own private stash. I've got a box back there, and if ever I wanna grow something, I can still plant those seeds. Usually, seeds will, will maintain their high germination rates, at least our seeds have high germination rates, for about three to five years, and that's the general rule. Some are different. Corn, for example, uh, corn loses its viability faster than some of the other varieties, and this is not how you store seeds. I'm only storing this for the video, and I've shared that a few times. I prefer to store seeds in a cool, dry, dark place. And because I do that, it's indoors where it's air conditioned. Um, it's not in a hot garage that gets over 100 degrees. Because I store them in optimal conditions, they will maintain their germination rates for longer. And then after a few years, you lose a little bit of your viability, but you can still plant them. So some of the tomatoes I have, they, I might only get 50% germination rate after five or 10 years but that's still 50% germination. So I'm definitely not gonna throw them away. You'll find uh, that depending on your area, you can germinate in three days, you can germinate in 24 hours. It just depends on your seeds and how you start them. So if you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call or send me an email. I'm Mary at Mary's Heirloom Seeds and my email is mary at marysheirloomseeds.com. If you have any suggestions for things that you'd like us to chat about next time, please feel free to let us know. Comment below on our YouTube. If, subscribe to us if you're not already and check us out on Facebook. We've got a lot of great information available on our website, which is marysheirloomseeds.com. And as always, that information is free. Uh, we look forward to chatting with you on our next video. And I'm Mary, signing off and happy planting.